is Crossing with Solutions 8, and today I'm going to teach you how to calculate ROAS, or Return on Ad Spend, since we just don't have enough acronyms. Um, so, Return on Ad Spend, ROAS, uh, really easy calculation. It's the total conversion value divided by the cost that it took to produce that value. Now, a couple of notes here. If you're doing omni-channel marketing, and you probably should be, you know, and then what really what that means is you're running Google ads and you're running Facebook ads and you're running ad roll and you're doing, you know, whatever else you're doing. It starts to make the most sense to measure the efficacy of your overarching marketing campaigns using ROAS. Um, and the reason for that is because it's really hard to compare apples to apples. Otherwise, it's really difficult for you to um to understand, for instance, you know, like if you're if you're doing the number of leads um, is a really good example. If you're comparing the number of leads that Facebook is producing versus the number of leads that Google is producing, well, that's a that's a, a tough comparison because Facebook leads and Google Ads leads are very different leads. So what I really like about ROAS and the reason that I like it is kind of the overarching KPI for most things is um, it lets you know how much money to actually make. So here's a very tangible, real, you know, that's it's how we keep score. How much money do we make? about how much I actually spent. So it removes all vanity metrics and brings you down to brass tacks. Now, you don't want to rely solely on ROAS. Um, you'll want to see some other data points as well, but uh, it's a really nice snapshot. So um, I think the reason you'll find that, you know, a lot of people are kind of obsessed with this, especially in the e-commerce space, uh, is it's just a, a very good health check. Uh, I think it's a strong equation to look at. So. One real quick note for you is we have this free tool that we give away. Um, this is uh, an estimates and projections document that I created. I've got two tabs here, one for lead generation, one for e-commerce. And what's really cool about this is you can populate these form fields um, with data that's for the most part readily available. So to give you an example, if you know you wanted to, to, to start bidding on a certain product, you can go to Google's uh, estimates and projections um, and figure out you know, what the average cost per click is, uh, how much available traffic there is. And then you can decide, well, this is how much I want to spend. Um, this is how much I make on, you know, one client. This is the lifetime uh, customer value. These are net profit numbers. Uh, here's what I think my conversion rate is going to be or what it is now, what I happen to know what it is. And then, oh, bam, here's my ROAS. Um, now, this is why I'm bringing this up. Your return on ad spend is or can be different than your return on investment and your return on investment is going to be uh, impacted by how much you're paying your ad manager uh, which hopefully is me so in this particular instance you might be pretty profitable and 200 you know, percent rise isn't great we try to aim for 300 percent in e-commerce campaigns but you might be semi-profitable using a return on ad spend model but the return on investment model is going to uh, send you a little bit underwater because it means that you're, you know, paying me a little bit more than I may be worth in this particular instance. So, uh, you know, hopefully our, our, let's say our value is a little bit higher. Let's say we're making 30 and $45 net on whatever it is that we're selling. Bam, that's a great ROAS. Uh, excuse me. Here's the ROAS. Here's the return on investment. So there's the difference between ROAS and ROI. ROAS is... Um, looking at your spend in a silo ROI is looking at everything that was associated with um, making that spend happen, which also includes things like vendors, uh, billable time, if applicable, um, you know, other, other products that you might be using other costs involved. So ROAS is, is easier to calculate. It's more of a serial number. It doesn't look at the entire view uh, and just have that in your mind. By the way, you can get this doc for free. If you go to solate.com forward slash estimates, um, and we just give that away to you. So you're welcome. Uh, one thing I wanted to just point out is um, you can actually build ROAS into your Google Ads campaign. So um, here's a, a Google Ads client. Uh, you notice they've got a really healthy ROAS. They're branded, of course, is amazing. Um, but, you know, even their smart shopping campaigns uh, uh, functioning a thousand percent ROAS. But here's what I wanted to bring up is this isn't a pre-existing column inside of Google Ads. As a matter of fact, we had to create this. So if you go to columns, modify columns, scroll down to custom columns. You can click on this little blue button here. And this little blue button is going to let you build a custom column. And it's pretty cool the way that it functions. Uh, I'm just going to show you the way that we built this one. Uh, we took conversion value divided by cost. Bam, conversion value divided by cost. 
and we got ROAS. Um, and you'll notice that these folks spent $7,300 to make $79,000. So if I'm just ultra annoying here, uh, I can take uh, 79,948 and divide that by 7326 and I get uh, 1091%, which is exactly right. So the formula here works and you didn't need me to do that for you with a calculator, but I chose to do that anyway, because I'm annoying. Um, and that's how you calculate ROAS. So again, really good key performance indicator. Be careful about making it the end all be all. Like I mentioned, ROI is really important, of course, because there's other factors that come into play other than just how much you spent on the ads. Um, and then, you know, there's a, a, a very good reason why you might want to measure things like, um, you know, uh, cost per lead, uh, cost per acquisition, average cart value, those, those elements. And some of those data points can get lost if you get too myopic. So I like having one key performance indicator to point to um, because it just makes it really easy for us to measure the health and efficacy of a campaign and, you know, do long-term comparisons. And I think ROAS is a really good KPI, but don't make it the only KPI. Have things on the periphery that you pay attention to. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, hit me in the comments. Um, if you've got other ideas for custom columns, by the way, I'd love to hear them. Um, if the video is valuable, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe because we're dropping these daily and I want to be able to go live. And if I get a thousand subscribers, I can do that. So I would be forever grateful to you. Share this with anybody that you think would value or benefit. And uh, other than that, I'm going to see you tomorrow. Thanks.